Hi. Um, when when using an FPGA, um, often during development, you are constantly uploading the the bit file to the FPGA in order to configure the FPGA for for whatever purpose you are designing. Um, however, when done with your design, you would naturally like this dip, uh, bit file to be stored on a flash memory uh, sitting next to the FPGA in order for the FPGA to well, be programmed on power up instead of when, whenever you go program it. And, and this naturally makes sense when you want to deploy a product. You, you, you don't need to, well, you don't want to, to have to program the, the FPGA every time manually. This naturally should happen automatically. So for this, you normally add a, a flash memory next to the FPGA. And in order to program your bit file into the flash memory, you need to do some other steps than what you do when you program the FPGA with the bit file. And, and this I want to go through here. So we start by powering up our impact tool from Silinx, the one you normally are using when you're programming the, the FPGA. Uh, we cancel here. And the first thing we want to do is create a prompt file. So the prompt file, uh, the first thing you need to do in this, you need to configure your hardware setup. And, and this is platform dependent, but in my case, I have an SPI flash uh, for a single FPGA. It has a storage capacity of 64 megabits. So I add the storage. Um, and then you need to set some uh, specifics on the output file. So I want to call this uh, XPS uh, demo. And it's I'm just putting it in the C underscore C root. And, and this is fine for me. So I press OK. <clears throat> so now it's uh, pinging me to. Uh, adding a device file, so I press OK, and I need to go find my device file. In my case, it's, uh, it's located in here, and implementation, and then you take your <coughs> your download bit file. Um, and I don't want to add another device, so I press no. Um, and you press over here, generate file. and it's completed successfully. So that's it for now. That's the first step. We close here. And then we, uh, in order to program this on the FPGA, it's more or less the same steps as you're used to. So you start by uh, boundary scan, then right click and, is, and uh, press initialize chain. And it uh, should find your FPGA, which it does. Um, and then up the top here, you see you have a, the option of selecting the SPI uh, memory device. So double click here and then go select the file, the prompt file we just created, which is called uh, XPS demo.mcs. Double click here and you need to select the type of memory you have. And in my case, it's uh, this one, but it depends on the platform. So this, these are the settings that work for me. And you press OK. And now you see that the flash memory sitting on top of the FPGA is loaded with the, with the software. So now all you have to do is uh, right click and press program. Um, and OK this. And if you don't have any errors, your uh, software is now uh, downloaded to the flash memory sitting on the FPGA. It will naturally, depending on uh, how much or uh, how, how big your file is, it will take some time. Um, but since it's transferred through uh, JTAG, it's not the fastest of uh, in connections. Um, whenever this is done, you get an uh, programmed OK, and you can uh, just go on power and power your FPGA, and you will see that. Whatever you had running on it uh, will start running whenever you power it up. So there's no need now um, to to do the programming of the FPGA for, for every power up. So that was it for this video. Thank you very much for listening.